So Josh asked me to go over the monitor code. Um, so I want to talk a bit about the architecture and the pieces of the system um, for people who are interested in working on it or find themselves needing to work on it or whatever. Uh, I've been involved in the set project for a while and I've done a lot of work here over the years and I'm working now on um, updating some of the some of the election systems and things. So I'm pretty familiar with it. Um, so here's a listing of the monitors, of, of the monitors um, files that we use inside of the source tree. The sort of, I mean, they're all important, but sort of the key points here are that um, the main monitor class wraps everything together um, in monitor.hncc. The different pieces are the, um, well, the monitor is a Paxos system. That means that we will elect a leader or all the monitors get together and they elect a leader using the elector and election logic stuff. Um, and then that leader um, is, is responsible for ordering all the incoming updates to the system and he grants leases to the, to the, um, to the PMs and they can serve reads to all the clients of the set system. That logic is embedded inside of the Paxos.h for doing the updates. And then um, the Paxos service is the interface that we use for, inter for making those kinds of changes. So for any given piece of data, whether it's the OSD map or the MDS map or whatever, um, we have a Paxos service for each specific kind of data. And those are named like the MDS monitor and the OSD monitor, the monitor map monitor. <laughs> um, and so these these specific monitor are like these specific classes are Paxos services, and they receive sort of incoming requests, and they act and they act on them by making requests into the backend Paxos. Um, the let's see, um, yeah. So if we look at the code, um, this is the Sethmon.cc file in in the source directory in in the main sub source directory. Um, the main thread or the main function is pretty standard. We do a lot of Ceph boot up stuff and parse flags and create, let's see, how far down do we need to go here? And then um, we have the, the data is stored inside of rocks DB or level DB. So we have a monitor DB store class that wraps that. So we set that up. And we set up our messengers based off of a mo monitor map that we find on disk or that we create ourselves from the config file. And these messengers, which we create here, are used for all the message processing. And then we create our main monitor class. And we tell it how it started up and we do pre-init and evaluate some flags and find the messengers and tell everything to start with the init class. Um, the monitor does a bunch of initialization with the messengers and he starts bootstrapping. And this bootstrap process is how we get into the Paxos quorum and make sure that we are up to date. Um, so if you're not familiar with Paxos, it's basically a street, it's an ordered stream of, of events or commits or updates. And the Paxos algorithm is actually utterly indifferent to what they are. It's just that the system you, you propose an update to Paxos and then the system accepts it or says, no, you're out of date, you, you need to come up to date first. So the bootstrap process is how we make sure we're up to date and we join the system as, as, as one of the, as one of, as either the leader or one of the peons. Um, and we're, you know, checking what our rank is, that's the monitor ID or not, um, within the system, it's it's an integer from zero on up. Um, and which of these bits are actually interesting here? 
Um, so our current rank is in the system and we are in the epoch, then we're good. Let's see, um, and we do, hang on. So, right, the monitors have a, have a global state system. So um, when you bootstrap, you're probing and that means you're trying to find out the other monitors and, and, get, and get the information you need to get in the system. Um, if it turns out that you have a monitor map and you're the only monitor, you just win. But otherwise, we start finding the monitors and we just look at the monitor map size and we send a monitor message or a monitor probe message to them. And then as with everything else in the system, in the stuff system, these, this is event driven. So we send them on probe and then eventually, and then we will up and then we make progress by getting responses back or by timing out with this probe timeout that we set up here. Um, so we can handle probe and it was either a, and if you're one of the running systems then you got the probe or if you're the new guy starting up, then you, got a reply and when you get a probe you just say you validate that it's someone who maybe should be talking to you and you if you are not part of the system um, oh yeah okay sorry this is inside of the thing Right. Um, if, if we get a probe and we say, oh, you're way newer than we are, then we better start over. Um, otherwise, we just reply to them with the monitor map that we have to make sure that they're up to date with who's supposed to be in the system and the Paxos versions that we have. Then the bootstrapping monitor gets that reply. And he... And codes his monitors compare them for some reason. Um, so we have our new monitor map that we got from them. And if it turns out that um, and then we update our local monitor map. What's the idea behind renaming the friends? Oh, um, so when you start up, th this is dealing with the many different ways we give you to start up monitors. So you can turn them on just by, you can turn on a new monitor just by giving it the IP addresses of, of one of the existing monitors, in which case it'll create a temporary mon map that has the, mon the, other, the other monitor as a no-name monitor with the IP address. And so we want to give it its real name, which will usually be A or B or C or whatever. Um, Thanks. Yeah. Um, so, lots of blah here. But the actually interesting parts here are there we go. Um, if the message had a Paxos version that was too old, then we just ignore them because we say, hey, we're newer than you are. But probably what happened is. Um, that either we overlap or we don't. And so here, let's see, if we look at our version of Paxos and we compare it against the version in the system. So if our version of Paxos is too far behind the version that the peer that we bootstrapped from, then we just start a full Paxos sync. Um, and we're not gonna look at the, at the Paxos sync now, but there's a few different, but there's two ways of catching up. Either we can get the missing Paxos origins because we're 10 behind and we just get the 10 updates, or we just copy over the, the base Paxos state that they have. And so this, this is checking if we're too far behind and we, and we copy over the base Paxos state. Otherwise, we won't. We'll just get the the um, the intervening updates. 
and we check for the um, the version of the system in terms of how we store it. Um, if the message said that they had a quorum, that's cool. Um, if we were somehow part of the quorum, like because we rebooted and the timeout had, and the timeout for the quorum ending hasn't hasn't or for the quorum like failing hasn't ended yet, then we then we just start a new election. Um, starting elections is how we enter a system. Otherwise, we ask to join the quorum. Um, and that's that's basically the bootstrapping. Um, so this this election thing is is an important part of of, of the stuff. Paxos system. In some Paxos systems, you can just join an existing system and be like, hey, I'm alive now. Um, and then you'll start like getting the, and, and you'll just join automatically join as a peon. Or in some systems, they're not leader election and everyone can propose. And so you just start receiving the proposals and you can propose yourself. In Ceph, you can't do anything if you're not part of the quorum. And so if you want to join the quorum, you start an election. And if someone else wants to, um, and if someone no notices that a timeout happens, you just start an election. Every everything is based around starting an election, and then the quorum consists of whoever, um, the quorum consists of the leader, which is the person who won the election, and then whichever replicas or peons they um, voted for them, and acknowledge them when when they do the finish. Um, so elections. Um, run, so you go into the electing state, and then you call an election in the elector. So the elector, as, as its name implies, its job is just to handle elections. Um, it, the, the logic, it, it, it can, got an election logic state that handles sort of um, and, and this really exists so that it's unit testable. And that handles the logic of dealing with the IDs and the proposals, like the monitor ID and whether it's submitted a proposal or an accept or something. And the elector class itself deals with the messages and the timeouts. So we can handle proposals and acts and victories. Um, oh, and it's the interface between the logic, the, um, the monitor.cc class and whose purpose is for um, doing the data storage, because we need to be persistent. Um, we have an election epoch that bumps up every time one gets started or any, or every time someone wins. So we call it here the call election function, and I, that actually just starts the logic. So if we're not participating in the system, because you can just turn it off, then we ignore, then we ignore this request. Otherwise, we init, which just makes sure that we know what the epoch is, and then we update the, and then we bump the epoch, um, and the epoch needs to be odd because that's the way our the way we distinguish between between whether we're electing or whether we're stable. And then we propose to all of our peers that we want to be the leader. So we just send off a election message with the mon propose with the op propose flag. Um, and then we um, I don't remember what this bit is. I think this is, a, this is a virtual function that can be extended, I think. Yeah, um, depending on the election, method of election you're using. Um, so we send off this uh, propose message and it's all event driven, so we wait. Um, now in the monitor, we haven't actually looked at the dispatch function yet. 
so So the monitor to dispatcher, so everything comes up into the MS dispatch function. Um, we turn them into a ref counted monop request. We do security validation based on whether they're a monitor and whether we have sessions. And if we don't have sessions, we need to turn them on. Um, and then we dispatch them as this op. So the election messages whoops, um, have this have this type, and we just dispatch them down to the elector. And it better be that election message, or we're going to abort. Um, and since it is an election message, we check that we're actually trying to be in the quorum. Or we ignore it. Um, it's possible that it's an election from election message from an old monitor that we booted out of the quorum by shrinking, by removing the monitor entirely from the mon map. So so we drop that. It's possible that it's from a monitor who's not in the mon map anymore because we replaced them or something, or because we have an older mon map and they're about to be in it. Who knows? Um, We take newer monitor maps if they have them, and then we handle it as, in this case, it would be the pose. Let's see here. So proposals come from a specific monitor ID. They have a set of required features and monitor features and monitor features, and so we validate those, um, and then we send it into the election logic. Um, so if their epoch is newer than ours, we better bump our existing epoch because we all because we need to stay up to date. Um, if it's an old proposal then we will actually trigger our deal a new election ourselves to help them join otherwise we handle our election process and right now this is very simple i actually have a pull request in progress to change our election options but right now it's just if the elector if, if there's an election in progress then the elector with the lowest number wins so if we have a lower number than them then we would win and so if we are already handling an election and we've acknowledged someone else, then we don't care because we have already voted for someone else and the and the ordering is static. Otherwise, hey, I should win, so I'm going to propose an election to everybody else. But if the ele other elector has a lower rank, then we issue a deferral to them, which just commit consists of in the logics case, notice it like saying we've act them and then asking the elector to defer. And that deferral consists of sending an act. Um, when you get an act, you say, hooray. Well, you, you validate it that it's good. Um, we, if we're not electing ourselves, then we're just yeah, if we are electing ourselves, we need to update this peer info structure. So this this is all sort of the messaging stuff, and then we receive the ACK into the logic. Um, we make sure that we're up to date, or we start over again. And if we then got an ACK from everybody, then we get to declare victory which consists of sending out a victory message. 
and then waiting to get um, to get another victory act from from our peons. But if we don't get the victory act in time, then we can also um, then we can also just time out and win with whoever does acknowledge us. Oh, and we and we tell the local monitor that we won the monitor class, and it does some stuff. Um, so there's there's more to the elector, but that's sort of the basics in terms of getting, winning election. Um, is there anything people really want to see here, or is that sort of a good overview of good enough overview of elections? All right, um, so let's go look at the monitor some more then. I guess we'll look at the win election just to transition. Um, so when you win an election, then you say, hey, I'm the leader. We set up a bunch of um, feature flags. We, oh, this is sort of interesting. So the monitors all need to have the same set of commands or you get some, even if they might be different versions because you're doing an upgrade. So we actually set, so the leader actually provides the valid commands to the monitors and it sends them out. Um, and then if a monitor gets a command, it doesn't recognize what it's part of the leader command instead it just forwards it. Um, so we tell Paxos that we're the leader and that we've won. We tell our monmat monitor that we've finished an election. Um, we do the finish election, which involves setting things like that we're allowed to look at Paxos, I think, a recollection. We update health. Um, if you lose the election, you do a lot of similar things, but without being the leader. some common stuff to yeah so we update the quorum to our feature lists and oh yeah so um routed requests uh, we'll talk about routed requests in a bit okay um but that's important resending them because the leader might have changed and we route request the leader sometimes okay um so now we have a running a, run, a running monitor quorum because we finished an election. And so we can handle requests from the from the from the clients to the system. Um, so let's say that we got something to do with the OSD map or um, then the board. I'm looking for here. Um, one one qualification question. We are yep. we are having now only one process that listens and handle uh, in this uh, for our monitor. We have only one process, one queue for incoming requests at this point. Yes, yes, that, that's important. Um, the monitors are all basic. I mean, are all more or less single threaded. Um, when you um, it, they run on the they run on the main dispatch loop, so messages come in, they get put into dispatch, and they get operated on. Um, this is important because the Paxos system needs to be strictly ordered, and so if if we get far enough along, you'll see a lot of checks for that. Um, and and the single threading is is part of how we like like we could shard it up into multiple threads, but we haven't done any of the work for that. So right now the single threading is how we, it's is, is an important part of how we maintain that single ordered stream of Paxos updates. Um, Thanks. Yep. Um, so, what does this part happen? Um, So 
So we tend to, so in, in the dispatch thing, then we switch by the type of message. But where's the, okay, yeah. Um, okay, yeah. Um, so there can be several different message types. Many of them will be, if you're doing something on the command line, that like Ceph, o Ceph Mon OSD update or whatever um, will be of the command type. So the monitor realizes that it's command, it sends it into the handle command function. And this runs through some checks. And eventually it says, and, and it turns it into a processable thing. And eventually it, go, it looks and, set and determines what module the command belongs to. Um, so it could go to the monitor thing in which it dispatches into the monitor mon. Um, but I think we're gonna go look at the OSD monitor one. Um, well, actually, no, we don't wanna look at the command ones. Um, oh yeah, we do, okay. Um, so if we look at the OSD monitor, I've lost myself here, just a minute. So we'll dispatch it into the OST monitor. Um, sorry, so the, these are all named for, a, these are all pointers into a specific Paxo service, which is why they're all calling the same dispatch function whenever you end up in them. Um, and so, And the Paxo service class. I haven't actually looked at this bit in a while. Um, right, here's the important bit. In the Paxo service cl class, there's two important functions that the children implement. Um, those are pre-process query um, and prepare update. So the peons have leases that allow the server reads. And so pre-process query is how you is is how you is how you deal with reads or 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 writes to discover that that you need to handle them. Um, and pre, so you send in a send in an op into pre-process query, and if it's a read, you can serve it and you understand it. You can serve it locally, but if it's write, you can't. And in that case, you return false. And then if it's something that and that tells the Paxo service, okay, I can't deal with this. Deal with this as a deal with this without doing an update. Um, if you are not the leader, you then need to actually submit the message to the leader. So we just forward that. Um, what time is it? We're about halfway through. Okay. Um, so we're not going to look at the details of the system, but we forward the request to the leader, and that. Show you the function. And so we and that, so we have this routed request thing and an M4 message that wraps up the, the actual message. And we send that off and we insert it into the routed requests map, um, which you might recall during the when we finished an election, we are resending the red request to the new leader. Um, and then once the message arrives to the leader, it goes through the normal request processing flow. So it gets pre-processed and it was just a read that the peon didn't understand because it was out of date. It gets handled 
Otherwise, um, we will prepare update. Um, we have to wait for the update until the local Paxo service is readable, or sorry, is, is writable. Um, when updates are in progress, because we are, are in the process of committing a new OSD map, then we're not writable, so we have to wait, um, in which case it just goes on to a retry list. But then eventually we are ready to prepare an update. And then we will process the message appropriately. Um, and then hopefully we return true. Um, if we, oh, so we return true if we made an update. We might not return true because it turns out to be an invalid update or because it's a duplicate update or something, in which case we don't need to do other, anything. Otherwise the Paxos service may say, oh, we need to propose something immediately. Um, or, um, like, like you might have said that in, in, the pro, in, in the process of doing the update, or we might decide as a Paxo service that we should propose immediately or whatever. Um, Can you explain and what you mean by proposing here? Right. Proposing um, so pro pro propose is Paxos languages. Um, when you want to make an update to Paxos, you propose the update um, from the leader out to the rep, out to the peons, and then they acknowledge it, and then it's committed once. And it, it, it's committed once a majority of the system has has written it down to disk. Um, but the way you know it's committed is when you get an, get an acknowledged message from the majority of the system. Um, so we, we can look at that, I guess. Um, it's been a while since I looked at this, so I may get a little more hesitant. But um, so we have a timer, we, we propose every n seconds if nothing else has happened and we have updates. Um, this is sort of, an, um, there's a lot of heuristics here that really exist because we want to propose regularly in order to maintain progress. For instance, if you're like the OSD map needs to get updated for, needs sometimes needs to get updated for OSDs to finish peering. So you want that to happen quickly. But if you're in a peering storm, you don't want to up, you don't want to propose a new OSD map on every single OSD up request because you might then get 10,000 in a second, which would be bad. Um, so the proposal timer and the immediate proposal and stuff are just sort of ways to try and try and manage the rate of updates usefully. Um, so every Paxos service has a pending state. Um, in for the OSD map, this will be, or for the OSD monitor, this is an incremental OSD map update, basically. Um, and then, or I guess it's actually, it's a full OSD map, and then it, and then it creates a, an incremental in, in, in the pending. Anyway, um, it's sort of the state that the system is going to go into once we commit. And then we say that we're proposing, we set up timeouts and finishes. Um, oh, actually, okay. Let's rejigger it a bit. Um, so, oh, okay, right. So we encode the pending into a transaction. Um, yeah. And then we ask Paxos to propose. And that looks like, what does that actually look like? So when, when we propose something, then we encode it. And then we Begin it begin as a Paxos term here. Uh, so we roll through, we throw through. Um, the transaction is sort of the the instructions to the monitor store to how to make the update that we want to make. And then we send a message asking all the others to begin with this new proposal number. Since we're the leader, assuming that we aren't um, 
it, assuming we're still the leader, then this is just, and, and we haven't timed out without noticing it, then this is just going to go through. Um, but we send them a message saying, hey, you get a new value. Wait, wait, does this include the transaction yet? So the next step. Um, let's see, they accept us. And then we commit. There we go. Okay. Then we start the commit, which involves queuing a transaction up into our storage system. Um, And then when it finishes, we tell everyone to, that it's done. And I actually lost track of where we sent it, but I think it must have been in the begin. Um, this is a, this is an important part of the system, but it's actually not one that you're that you're likely to work on too often. This code does, this code has not changed in a while and is very stable. Um, the actual Paxo services are where most of the are where most of the action happens. Um, so, when you're handling command, uh, we're we're in the we're in the prepare system, prepare state right now. So we prepare a command, and remember that prepare means try it out and try and handling it in a read only fashion. So we decode the command. We have a standard command format that we use for sending them along the wire. And then there's this, the prefix is sort of the, is the, the actual command ID. Um, and this is a little bit messy parsing, but it's, it's a consistent system throughout most of this, throughout most of the monitor. And you'll compare the prefix and try and find the one it matches to. Um, so sure, let's look at crush. Um, so we want to set a crush map. And in prepare, we're not going to be able to actually do the update because we're only preparing, but we want to validate it, that it's a valid crush map to set. Um, so we make sure that we can decode it. And if we can't, then we set an error that it's invalid and reply, which we'll look at in eventually. Um, then we make sure that the prior version is our current version. And if it's valid, good, then, or sorry, if, if it matches, then this command, this command has already been processed. So whatever, we don't, we can reply and say success. Otherwise we have to say, nope, this was no good and reply, um, et cetera, et cetera. Validation, validation. But eventually, we say, hey, it worked. So we go to update. Wait, hang on. Now I'm confused. Oh, damn it, I'm in prepare instead of pre-process. That was my confusion. I'm sorry, I did that all wrong. Um, that was a prepare, which is allowed to actually update. <laughs> um, there we go. In pre-process, we, we do all that same validation. process here right nope oh we don't have set crush map in the pre-process that's disappointing all right we'll look at a different one um or perhaps it just doesn't do the validation ahead of time that's disappointing okay um
All right, someone changed this thing. Okay, so in this case, the the preprocess command is going to be like, well, I didn't recognize that set crush map command, so I'm returning false um, to the Paxos service implementation. So he then forwards it to the leader and then dispatches it into prepare. I'm sorry, I should have checked to find one that actually went through both. Um, but anyway, in prepare then, um, we did all our validation and we made sure that we were good. And then we either go to the update label, in which case we Let's see here. Let's see something here. Oh, where are you implemented? Oh, you are. Just, okay. So once we finish our validation, then we set the crush map to the new crush map in our pending incremental. That's a Paxo service member. Or, no, sorry. It's not a Paxo service member. That's an OC map member, but it's it's the upcoming OSD map incremental that's going to be applied. Um, so, but that's that's just a, an in-memory state. So we need to wait for it to actually, so when we're sending a crush map, because that's an update to the system, we need to wait until it's actually committed. Um, and in this case, we're not gonna force the commit. We're just going to, we're just going to wait for the, um, we're just gonna wait for a new commit to happen um, because it'll, because a new crush map isn't super urgent and it'll it'll happen within a couple of seconds anyway. Um, or possibly we found a, an, error in val, an error during validation that it was invalid or that it had already been done or something, in which case we just replied. Um, and that's just sending an act back um, via the messenger. Um, and uh, except that the send reply function also deals with the routed requests, which is what this proxy con thing is. Um, okay, that was a bit messy, but that's sort that's sort of the basic message flow. And it's actually kind of an intro. Um, so we got 13 minutes left. I can pick out something else, but this is a good time for questions if there are things that people want to know about in general on the monitors or in something specific that we saw today. Um, earlier you said uh, that the, uh, the, epoch, the epoch needed to be uh, stored persistently. 
yeah the mod comes yeah. up where does that get stored just like on disk uh yeah so the um let's see is this in the ot monitor no it's all in here um yeah I've, I've forgotten what it's called now but there's a BP store. Yeah. So there's a monitor DV store class. Um, which we have in the monitor. Um, so it's, it's just a pointer. Um, the elector class. accesses it through the monitor. Um, oh, it actually applies it my access it directly. Okay. Um, so monitor DB store in, I think it's a, it, oh, maybe it doesn't. So just to be clear, though, we, okay. we store the um, the latest epic it's seen. Yeah. Um, so, like any monitor is allowed to is is allowed to increment the epoch um, and call an election. And so, if you're joining, you you need to be a newer like if you're trying to join a quorum that you weren't in before, you need to be a newer election epoch. Um, this is just. I mean, it's the standard trick. You have a number that continuously increments to make sure that you're all the way up to date and that you're not like processing old messages from any previous epoch or some or something of that nature. Um, yeah, and then just each one stores its own, so it's not like a central storage or anything. Got yeah, it. yeah. Okay. So, so um, the the monitor DB store is a key value DB, which is and a key value DB, <laughs> I believe, is in the Seth common code, um, but it's a it, it's a wrapper on key value, DB, but basically what this is doing is just wrapping up. Um, nowadays, Rocks TV or it's really level DB for us. Um, so the monitor storage is all key value based, and um, it th this um, this monitor DB store class mangles um, the the inputs will be like their their prefixes here, but what they're um, mostly going to be is um, sorry, the, the Paxo services will sort of, will, will say, hey, store, and then it mangles together the Paxo service name with like OSD map and the epoch, and with OSD map and an epoch number um, to, to just turn them in, to turn the key value accesses that the, that the OSD monitor has into straight key names. And, and and the values that are associated with them. Um, and each monitor maintains its own store independently. Although you, you might have no, you might have noticed that it might it can send um, monitor DB store transactions over the wire um, in order to do the Paxos updates and things. Does that make sense? That answer your so. question? Okay. Yep. yep. Excellent. Um, so what do we now looked at? It's interesting. Um let's see. Greg? Yep. Uh, uh, so I was uh, recently trying to make some uh, fix. So I, I had a few questions about the pending incremental map. So uh, I, was, I was I was wondering if the pending incremental map is uh, is uh, kind of refreshed for each epoch or what 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 is the life cycle of that pending incremental map? I was just trying to understand that. The pending incremental in the OSD yeah. monitor. Okay. Um, OSD monitor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so the pending ink is, is an incremental OSD map, but 
I'll hit the this function. Um, okay. Um, so in the Paxo service class, there's a set of things around update from Paxos and there's a reset pending or something. Nope. Okay, let's create pending. Um, So the Paxos service class logically works in terms of a logical pending, although it's all maintained by the you know, by the subclass implementations. Um, but that pending will be created on the leader when it becomes the leader or whatever. Um, it is encoded whenever it whenever it decides to propose an update. I think you should have seen that going by, and um, it can be discarded. I think when it needs to reset. So the OC monitor, we have a create pending. And it when you create a pending, it just it, you know instantiates a new incremental class with a with a epoch greater one greater than the current one and clears out some metadata updates. There's some safety checks. Um, this is a version compatibility updating, and we're, and then we are done. Um, and then whenever, basically, anytime you do an update in the OSD monitor, then you apply it to the pending incremental, and you may or may not, and you might ask the the other Paxo service to um, to propose the update right away and to commit it immediately. Um, when that happens, the Paxo service will ask for, we'll call into encode pending. So we'll set some final bits. We can do more compatibility updates and stuff. Then we create a new OSD map from the incremental and we encode things there's lots of it because the osd map update system is complicated um but it's all happening inside of this encode pending function yeah i just i just wanted a bit more clarity on this because i had a situation where i had to update uh, um something simple like, like uh, a down stamp for example within the osd x info uh, and I want that information to be uh, committed. So I was trying to understand the entire flow of how we go about uh, committing things into the, um, uh, first into the pending incremental, and then finally, finally to the disk or wherever into the OSC map. Okay, so um, the the flags are kind of special because in the, so, um, down. So we can look at the OSD down command as an example for this actually. Um, so we actually the 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 down flags are are, are a bit messy are, are a bit weird. Um, we have an the incremental has this pending OSD state set map um, from the OSD. And then it x and then when you apply an incremental, you XOR. I, th I think it's how it works, or or maybe the presence. No, the presence just means swap from previous. I think, um, w which is an XOR. But anyway, um, so if you want to set an OSD down and it's already down, or, or and and it's currently up, you just then you have to set the OSD up flag um, on it in, in the incremental. Um, and then we have made an update, uh, 
And so then we have to wait for the permit for the finished proposal. And we're not gonna, I guess we don't try and do that immediately. Um, but we can quest propose. Proposed pending. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um. So you can actually call this from from the child classes. Um. Yeah. And it will then encode it immediately and send it out. Um. And at that point, the proposal is happening, but the OSD mat and the OSD monitor system is no longer writable. Um, it's readable while they're happening, I think, um, but it, but it's definitely not writable. Um, but I, I guess I'm not sure what what your what your question is about the lifetime. Um, oh, I, I was just uh, uh, trying to understand um, if the pending incremental map is kind of r refreshed per epoch. Or, yeah. Uh, Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's request for yeah. Um And I, I admit I don't actually remember where it happens, but um, but though so so once once a message is committed, then there's this update from Paxos command or function, and so that gets invoked, um, and so this this is called after the after the new OSD map incremental is already written down on disk. So we just read it. Um, so we asked for the latest full version. Um, and then we apply the incremental onto our in-memory OSD map eventually. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. Um, that brings us up to eight o'clock. So, which which is our scheduled end time. So, any last questions? All right. Thanks everybody for attending. Have a good day. Thanks, Greg. Great walkthrough.